Hey guys, today I thought, I know we've done some ply grip uh, videos before, but I have a very challenging fabric. It's a lightweight drapery fabric, so not only is it a lightweight, it's also a plaid, which is another whammy. But it's a lightweight fabric, not only that, it's an older fabric, it was on her windows, she cleaned it, so I'm, I have a very sensitive fabric, let's put it that way. So I want to give you some tips on how to do ply grip, and make sure you do the ply gripping, and don't, don't fall for the other products that are out there that look very much like this, but are not. You want a ply grip, which is the softer of the two, definitely on this. You can't use the anything high. I never use the, the harder, uh, it's not even called a ply grip, it's called something else. So stick with the ply grip. Uh, again, you can find that on our store. Um, one of the products that we have, which we've kind of uh, weeded out for you guys um, to use to make sure you guys get the best products, is on the store at Upholstery on Broadway. You guys should check it out. But anyhow, what we're going to do is, what I do is I, I cut all my ply grip first. I, I cut it a little oversized, and you'll see why I do that in a minute. But So let's cut the, the ones that are going down. I cut it you know, a couple of inches bigger. And I'm using my good scissors, but I'm using the, when I cut this, uh, I cut, I'm cutting up in here with my scissors. Guys, the only time I cut up here with my scissors is with ply grip, so uh, don't feel as though you're ruining your scissors. Just don't try not to cut it down in this area. You will be cutting a little bit in there, but um, you could cut here, okay? So there's two pieces, and I'm going to cut the third piece along the top. Cut it a little bit bigger. Okay, and I want to really start clean, so I'm just going to move my ply grip away now. I don't need it. Uh, the reason I cut, that's one reason, is I like to get the, the roll of ply grip away because if it ends up on the floor and you step on it, you got a problem. It's a waste of product, right? Uh, this stuff will bend very easily. That's what it's designed for. Okay, so let's start with this piece here. Now, I have to ply grip the entire bag. I can't cheat and maybe put a, uh, what we call blind tacking over here because it is a plaid and I have to match the fabric and it, it doesn't match up very well uh, at all. So that's why I have to do all three. Um, you'll see, so if you try to plot, uh, even if you attempted to match the stripe, you'd never get it perfectly with that stripe. So we have to, have to make sure we, we have a stripe. So that's another problem with this is that it, it's actually a stripe, it's a plaid. So it, I thought this would be a good piece to showcase skills. You know, you guys get good. Um, in the beginning of your career, you might want to use, you know, tightly woven fresh fabrics with no padded in them. That's what I recommend to start. Um, but when you have a challenging fabric like this, at least you'll have this video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this I'm going, to this, I'm going to start up at the top here, okay, where these two pieces are going to intersect. This is very important. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a spot right up at the top of that prong, and watch what I do. I'm going to kind of curve it just like that, okay. I wish you guys could feel this, but these are very sharp, the edges. So what I'm doing is I'm softening the edge, okay, because I don't want my fabric will poke right through that if I don't do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start, I'm going to get this set right up on the top here, all the way to the top of this welt, not to top, but to the bottom of the welt, sorry, watch, I'll show you. Let's just get a couple of staples in and then I'm going to swing it around to see where I started and what I did there. So, around here. so what I did was I got, I got three staples in here, I got one here and I got two up at the top so that it doesn't roll too much, okay, that's a, that could be a problem. Um, if it rolls a little bit too much, the edge of the ply grip will come halfway out to the piping and that's not good. So watch, watch what happens. And sometimes what I even do, now I'm going to slow this down to show you what I do. First of all, let's do the bottom one. Bottom one lines up nicely. Let's do the top one. But sometimes what I do is I, I take a little flip back and I, I'm, forced, I'm going this way just a teeny bit, you guys, okay? And even that I did that, look, at, look what happened. You see how it's still going to hit onto the welt? So I'm going to take another st step back, and I'm going to take my regular, my butt end of the regular, I'm just going to go like this to get it. Now you see what the difference there, you guys? Look at that. Isn't that nice? It's gonna, that's going to close up beautifully. And I'll show you what happens up here. But let's finish this. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this down. What I'm doing is I'm shooting the staple in the hole. These holes were designed originally, you guys, with six ounce tacks when ply grip first came out. And, and then um, everybody uses the stapling now. So it just happens the staple, the staples that we use, the length works pretty good with that hole. Isn't that interesting? They didn't design it that way, but that's how it ended up. I suppose if they redesigned this ply grip, they might make the hole a little bit more of a rectangular hole for the for the ply for the staples to go in a little bit better, I guess. So I made a mistake, but I'm glad I did just to show you guys something. I actually use the top piece for the side, but actually that that brings up an interesting point. Uh, how do you how do you uh, string together a piece of ply grip? So let's just show you how to do that. Since I made the mistake, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come this way. I'm going to cut off what up at the top. Let's pull this chair up. So if you run out of ply grip, don't wet it. You do have to smooth this piece off. Notice how I was shielding. For you guys who don't wear glasses or goggles, you, you might want to go like this when you have a piece of metal coming out like that. That's why we do recommend goggles or at least glasses. So let's just finish. We're going to take this and put it about halfway closed. We're going to keep it open for our fabric to go into. We want all these to be even. Sometimes the mistakes, um, even when I make a mistake, are great learning moments, right, you guys? So a lot of times on the videos, on the, even on the online classes or even on our, um, our paid videos, I make a mistake, but I show people how to fix it. I think that's the difference. So again, I'm, I'm going to have to take the top and just kind of, when I'm going to kind of splice these in, okay, and I'm going to smooth that off, and I'm going to get that going down here, and then hopefully these two pieces will beat nicely, and I'm going to show you a little trick to, to use too. And then uh, we have this piece should be right on the horizontal plane here, which it is. But we still need that just on it out. Let's just that's gonna be great. Now we're gonna go up there, we're gonna add something there in a minute, but let's do the top piece now. Take the shorter one, remember. Make sure this one's going to work on this. Okay. Let's take this. See, you don't want little pieces of metal like this even on the inside. So I'm going to cut that right there and then I'm going to smooth that out. Now, I'm going to show you, I'm going to butt this in this way. You don't ever want ply grip to be overlapping. See what I did there, you guys? I'm going to get a couple of more staples in here and show you how this is going to close up. I usually, like I said on the end, a little trick is I, I usually get a couple of staples. Sometimes I try to get in this way too with the staple. It just kind of holds the ends better. So what's going to happen here, let's just get a, another one, and I'm going to show you this. What's going to happen is this is going to pleat, there's going to be a little pleat inside here, and then it wraps around this side, and then it's going to close. And it's, The idea here with the ply grip is to get it as tight and clean as possible, okay, because that is a, a point where people, you know, will brush up against. It's a stress point in the chair, especially with the very thin fabric, you want to try to finish it properly. So now I'm going to continue. The nice thing about ply grip, look at you guys how flexible it is. You don't want to go too far ahead. Um, 
but you know you can go like if you're really skilled you go like three or four inches ahead look what I'm doing again it's three or four inches ahead getting a staple probably be three or four inches swinging that around and then I'm going to now what happens here is I can either pick having it come to the edge here or having it recessed like I did on the other side. It actually depends on where your prongs end up, right? So when I'm looking at this, I don't, if I cut, well, let's just cut like this. Let's just cut this like this. Okay, you see how the prongs, you know, the, the metal piece uh, holding the prongs on is slanted like that. That's not going to line up very good with my corner. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in a little bit. I'm going to cut it right there, and then I'm going to I'm going to do my trimming. See, there's more to this than what you might have thought, you guys. Even if you've been using ply grip, um, the more you use it, the more you realize there's little there's better ways of doing it. Okay, what I'm going to do is my staple gun is not working up to par today. I might need a little tune. And then I get an extra staple in the end. Okay, and then I'm going to go back. And sometimes if you get really good, I'm, I'm using this then at the same time I'm, I'm going and I'm shooting the rest of the staples in every hole. Right? You can see that? Just to save you a little time. A lot of times these tips that we have are trying to, you know, hopefully I'm reaching a lot of people, probably not a professional upholsterer, because they probably know how to do all this, but even people who have been upholstering and using the ply grip, I hope that I'm giving you tips. We'd like to hear from you people in comments. Please join our Facebook page, Broadway Upholstery. Please subscribe if you like the video, if it's teaching you anything. Um, so yeah, I have a half of right there, so I think I'm going to cut that off. I like, I think the lighting is fabulous, uh, thanks to our lighting guy, Patrick. I think that we're getting a good show here with the lighting, so you guys can really see what I'm doing here now. The only thing I need to do that is round that off, and we're ready to start stapling it. Let me give you another tip when I get down. You really do, and most things upholstery, you important so if you notice that I was straight I'm straight up here but then when I come down here I'm spreading my legs a little bit to get a little lower and then a little lower spread my legs a little bit more and I'm right here and then what I what I like to do is pull up the chair I don't like sometimes I nail I don't like to be comfortable when I'm doing this you really do need to line up you know your gun to that hole so it's important that you're steady so let's just bring the chair over I also need to get eye level to see where my ply grip is coming you see the horizontal line you guys I just noticed something my horizontal line I'm gonna throw that up here a little bit okay let's just come down a little bit more before we cut it okay I'm gonna come down Make sure you don't go all the way. You need you need that to stick out a little bit so that you can cut it. Another tip, right? Need to finish that a little bit. Okay, now. So it's that we were really close on measuring this, you guys. We're right one prong away. Look at that, and then we trim that up like that. And then we finish. Okay, guys, so another little tip, and on a, a very fragile fabric, you're going to have to do this. At your corners, you're going to take a little tape, masking tape, and I, I, I still want these edges to be a little softer. So I'm going to take my masking tape. And I'm just going to fold it over. Now I'm not going to fold it into the prongs. I want to be on this side of the prongs because your prongs need to work on the fabric, right? And so what this is going to do is allow us to hammer this a little bit more. It's going to take the edge off that ply grip. See what I'm doing, you guys? Just, just a little bit over the edge. So that's going to doesn't look like much now, but wait till you see the fabric. How the fabric works around. That's kind of cool. And I didn't forget that I 
splice this piece down in here. So I think what I want to do is take a piece of tape where I spliced it. Another good tip, right you guys? Now in some fabrics, some fabrics you might not even have to do this. If it's a really heavy fabric, you might not have to do this. But make sure you get it in there and just right at the edge. See? Let's do this and then we're ready for our Dacron. Just probably a two inch piece. Open this up just a little bit so we can get that in there. Right? All right, we're ready to go. And the next step is going to be the Daycron. Okay, we're going to take our Daycron. Now, here's the thing about Daycron, you guys, that I kind of like. First of all, with the soft weight fabric, soft to light fabric, it's going to work well. Cotton wouldn't work because you could see right through this on the cotton. That's how thin this stuff is. But Daycron acts as a, as we, we show you how to use stretches, which is a separate piece of fabric to fill in this hole. Daycron actually does two things. It can, it's padding and it can be used like almost like a muslin or a liner. It's that it's strong enough. It's a one inch Daycron. So we also have that available you guys. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go right up on the edge of this. I don't know if you saw what I did. I had a straight piece of Daycron yet I, I went right along the curved edge. You can do things like that with Daycron which I kind of like too. It's kind of cool. I'm going to stretch to the bottom Get some more staples. Stretch to the bottom. Stretch, stretch, stretch. Come back up here because this came away a little bit. So I that piece ripped, but I, I put it back. That's another nice thing about Daycron is you, you can kind of splice it in nicely. Now you do want, I did pull it though, I do want some firmness here. Because I, I, it is helping with our back and not caving in. That's why it ripped. Pull this side to side. That's very firm. And also, it's it's got a, it's a batty. Tell you something else on Daycron. Sometimes you can you can tear. Not all the times. In this case, I can. I'm just going to tear it like this. And it's always better to have a feathered edge than a cut edge when you're doing this fine work around here. See? Be careful it doesn't tear this way. But if you staple it off enough, now it's not going to cooperate on the bottom. So on the bottom, I'm going to cut it. And that, it depends on the um, the weave of the Daycron as to where you can trim it like that. So beware, you guys, you could actually tear it a little bit. So that's even on the bottom, which is fine. But having a, having a uh, you got to be really careful when you cut it uh, around these points. So a lot of times what I'm doing is I have to use my scissors. I'm cutting it, I'm cutting it at uh, an edge like this. I'm edging it out so that it doesn't get the bulk of the acron with one cut. I don't know if you know what I mean. Okay. Now what I'm going to do, sometimes I use my staple gun to pin this up. However, this is not going to pin up uh, like that because this, again, the fabric, it's a really thin fabric. It's driving me crazy actually. What I, what I mean by that, you guys, is sometimes what I can do is staple here, staple here and here, and then pull it down and staple on the bottom to get it adjusted. But this one, this fabric here won't allow me to do that, so I'm going to pin it. Pins are a little safer, they're smaller. And I'm going to line it up. I'm going to pay a little attention to my side stripe on the plaid, see if I can match that. I didn't have a lot of fabric. That was another thing, you know, when you take jobs like this, you guys have to be careful. You have enough fabric. This one just barely made it. So I'm going to get three pins. Oops. Okay. 
Now the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to measure on the bottom to make sure my stripe is coming down straight. This is my center stripe here. See, I even had to contend with this, the old drapery the, where the rod went in on the bottom, that's the stitch. So I have to cut around that too. So you know, you probably should, if you're going to take on a job with a customer's own material like this, you might want to charge a little extra for the labor because you know you're going to run into some difficulties. And I'm trying to get this perfectly lined up. I think I got it right there and I'm going to pin staple this. I'm not going to staple this all the way, I just want to make sure. Pin staple as you turn, you've got a little halfway, like tilt it a little bit. Yep, you can do that. Measure it again to see if I'm right on there. Close. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to one side up here. I'm going to trim it a little bit first. Okay. Now this is really important. On a thin fabric, people say how far back should I trim it before I put my fabric in the ply grip. It depends on the fabric. If it's a heavy fabric and it's a good weave, you need to be closer. If it's a lightweight fabric like this and you're afraid of it that's going to fray, you need to be a little bit further. So a little bit more fabric is okay on this. So I'm going to judge it to be about a half of an inch above the welt. Okay, so let's just see if that was good. So I'm going to take it a half inch above the welt. Some people like to chalk it if you're, if you're a little nervous about freehanding it like I just did. Um, what we're going to do is try to line up the stripe and I'm just going to insert the fabric into the prong. Then I'm just going to close it up a little bit more. And then I'm going to take my pin out on this side. I'm going to come this way. And notice how I'm working away from the center, right? And then I'm very gentle. This is very gently pushing the fabric in. Okay, now I want to get to the critical point to show you. I'm only going to do the corners to here. I'm going to do this side of the corners to here. And I'll explain that in a minute. Okay, let's just go to the corner here. Now let's just trim this side. This happens to be a double fold. Let's just see how... You remembered what I did up here, you guys. So this is the first part that you put in, which actually acts as a pleat. It's a little bridge or a pleat. It's only about a quarter of an inch in there. And then that little piece of fabric wraps around the back side of the, of the ply grip that's in there. And then I'm going to continue down here. Now watch, just watch how beautiful this is going to corner out, okay? Now I'm even going to take my regulator and corner that piping just a little bit as I push this in. Just a little bit as I push that in. Now I'm going to take my mallet, my first Look at that you guys. It's not quite ready yet because it has to be pulled this way. But that cornered out beautifully. Let's see how the other side comes out. on this side just to show you. I'm just trying to, I'm in front of you now just because I want to make sure my, my, my stripe is lining up and I'm just gently, now I'm using my left hand just for your benefit you guys, just to kind of work it in there. It's a very gentle treatment you guys. If you've got your ply gripped up there right, there's no forcing this, it really isn't. Sometimes there's finesse involved. <laughs> I guess a lot of times in upholstery it's finesse. The brute strength comes in when you're picking up a sectional sofa or something, I guess. Okay, now I, I have to just check to see how I finish this. And so this side's going to be my pleat side. Let's just get all this in. How nice that is. It's 
Sometimes I like doing ply grip. Pull that just a little bit. And watch this one now. Just get my now. So now you've probably seen just a little bit of looseness or bulging in there. We have to finish now stretching to the bottom. So that's why I only pin tacked it. And before I move forward on this, we want to make sure that that's tight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the middle. Of course, I got it's, it's a Martha Washington chair, which has the cross rails on it, which doesn't make it. <laughs> we got a lot working against us on this fabric and this chair, you guys. <laughs> But usually the reason you, you put the pin staple in like you do is to try to make it easy to take it out. So I'm pulling this, I'm giving this a good pull. Okay. I'll take that one up here. I'm using my thumb for leverage and I'm trying to make that. Now I turn over here and get this. Not this way. Let's see if we can get that finished. Why don't you cut both sides at the same time? Because if you cut both sides at the same time and you make a mistake, it's a little harder to fix it. So never cut both sides. Do one side at a time. Cut one side at a time. That's the tip of the day, you guys, right there. So what we're going to do is, uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to do this side first, probably because I'm right-handed. <laughs> and, um, you know, I freehand this. Like I said, if you want to take a piece of chalk and then cut it a half of an inch where you chalk lined it, that's fine. A lot of people are nervous about freehanding it like this. Okay, I'm going to come down here to this point, about three inches uh, the, uh, from the bottom of the chair. I'm not going all the way and you'll see why. Um, you notice this stretch, do you see this stretch down you guys? And then, and then that holds it. And then you finish going up. You can, if you've got it tight where you want it, you can even start the other way. Some people like going this way. Now, be careful, you gotta get every prong. You gotta get every sleeve of metal and every prong. If you miss one, you have to go back and do it over again. So what I like to do at this point, I'll make sure I get it all in. This is coming out beautiful. Okay, now, the reason I stopped about three inches from the bottom, you have to make a cut here. And you have to make a cut from the post. You don't make a cut this way or worse yet this way. These both are wrong. The cut that you want is this way in from the post and into the right. You need to go right to where the corner is. And you're going to be nervous doing that. But the reason that you want to cut it like that is because when you fold it this way, you've actually created a, a pleat, right? And, and you close up that cut that cut. That cut has to be close. It has to be cut like that. See, I got a little bit extra here. Now I'm going to cut this way. And then we're going to get this in like so. Now I'm going to take the very edge right here. I'm going to take a... Here's another little tip, you guys. We have, in the, in the upholstery business, we have what we call gimp tacks, which are a small head of tacks, which are perfectly okay to use here. But I have pins that I use for fabrics that are lightweight like this. So what I do is I cut, you, do, you need something in here. You can't leave it like that. So I take a pin, cut it about in half, and then I put it in the corner. You're not even going to hardly see this, you guys. We can also run a welt. We have no more fabric to run a welt around the leg. So this is another way to finish it. Like that, you guys. 
that's called real nuance and real fine work you know it's finished off nicely so let's go to the other side and again I'm freehanding it it could be a little nerve-wracking I don't even really I'm not even using the line of the plaid I'm making sure that I don't do that because it could that could be off it's more important to have what you need under which is about a half of an inch look at you guys this little subtle pull down like that and then hold it push it in hold it See, I'm using my regulator some of the things I do so mechanical sometimes I don't even think about teaching them but what I'm doing is I'm going like this and then I'm taking my thumb and just doing a little pressure in to just to make sure that it falls the end of it falls in so it doesn't fall out on you. I don't know if you know what I mean. It doesn't peek out is what I meant to say. Look at how beautiful I love ply grip. And then we're gonna take a another stretch here, another cut here. Put a little pin in here. And the last two staples really are right. This way. This way. Last little thing that you do is you take your hammer and you go along your very carefully take your magnetic hammer does a little bit of a better job of closing the fly grip you got to be careful though because it's a lightweight fabric than the than the wood mallet does you want to check to make sure there's no staples in there there you go we'll see you next time